go. Hi, I'm Kip Hansen. I'm the uh, candidate from the state of Utah for the Carl Perkins Community Service Award. I've been asked to respond to two questions. Uh, one question is to describe a, a service project that you've done and how it impacted your students and community. I've thought about this a lot, and the one that comes to mind is an event that happened back in November 2014. I had newly returned to the teaching profession after a 30-year absence. I had uh, a newly chartered FFA chapter, and I wanted to set some good traditions. So I, I encouraged my officers to participate with the FFA uh, Food for America program. My motivations were, were good enough. I, I knew it was something we could complete, get a certificate, show we succeeded in something. But I found out very quickly that I was very short-sighted about why we really do these things. We had a successful food drive. Uh, we collected in excess of 800 pounds of canned goods and, and other food commodities. Uh, they were piled in, in the back of my classroom. And at the, uh, toward the end of this uh, drive, uh, I, I had a student that was one that spent quite a bit of time in my class before school and after school, just, just visiting about different things. He walked in after school this day, uh, just before we took all the food over to the food commodity or to the uh, food pantry and he, he looked at that food for a minute and he said, Mr. Hanson, he says, are you taking all of this food to Karen's share? And I says, we are. And, and he just quietly responded. He says, well, our family gets a lot of our food there. It hit me like a ton of bricks. I thought, whoa, I hadn't even considered that we have kids at this school that come from families of affluence. We have some that are on the opposite end of that spectrum. And, and here through this project, these students, totally unaware of this, were, were helping lift fellow students that, that were very much in need. It, it, it touched me profoundly. I, I think uh, this and then what followed the, the following day uh, changed my core values, not just as an educator, but, but as a man. That, that next morning, uh, one of my classes was my leadership class, and I intended to load up these commodities and then haul them over to, to the care and share to the food pantry after school, just at, as an impulse as these class came. It was a small enough class. My truck was parked fairly close to the classroom. I decided to have these kids help me load these things in my truck. And then I says, let's not wait till after school. Let's, let's take these over to care and share. I'd never been to the facility. I didn't know how things worked over there. And in fact, I could have gotten all kinds of trouble for this. I didn't clear this with administration. We just left campus. I had kids drive their own cars. It was just a few blocks away, but off we went. It was a great thing that we did. We got there and we walked into the facility and uh, all the kids in tow, about a dozen or so uh, kids with me. And as I walked in, I realized we shouldn't be where we were. There were little families and, and individuals in there getting their food commodities. And then I realized that maybe we were intruding. I asked the kids politely to wait outside. I went to the lady that was assisting and said, we, we've got a donation here, several hundred pounds of food. What do we do? She told me where to go to the loading dock, that Joe would be back there. I didn't know who Joe was. Come to find out he was the manager of this whole thing. Joe met us back there. We weighed our food and, uh, and he says, have you got a few minutes? And I says, why? He says, I want to tell you what we do here. And he gathered those kids around that loading dock and he talked to them about homelessness in our community. Uh, things that I had no idea. He talked about the causes, uh, about addictions and about mental illness and about other things that happen sometimes outside people's con uh, control. While we were there, we also observed quite a bit of this homeless population that, that frequented that area. He also pointed across to another building that would join this one. It was the Women's Crisis Center. Uh, it was, uh, he was also the manager over that. And he explained what the purpose of that was. Anyway, it, it left uh, these kids, it left me deeply touched. I asked the kids to return to the classroom. Every one of them returned, amazingly so. Uh, we went in and we sit down in my classroom. We put our chairs in a circle. I said, let's talk about what we just learned. One girl said, well, I knew that one little family there. They go to my church. Another one started to cry. She said, when I was in about sixth or seventh grade, she said, my dad lost his job. And shortly after that, he abandoned my, our mom and, and us kids. 
we got our food there for a while until we were able to move in with my grandpa and grandma until we were able to get back on our feet. At that very moment, our, our one assistant principal walked into the room. I thought, oh boy, I've had it. He was just there to talk to one of my students. But I told Brad what we had just done, and he says, can I, can I share something with these kids? And I said, sure. He pulled the chair up. Uh, Brad was a, 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 he's a Native American man, grew up in very humble circumstances in a home that was negatively impacted by the effects of alcoholism. He shared this. He talked about this little boy. He knew what it was like to be hungry a lot. From that point on, it's been pretty important for me to have this type of service in my FFA chapters. It, uh, if it didn't impact my students, and I don't know how it couldn't, it, it impacted me. It's continued to impact students I've had every year since then. That's probably the project that comes to mind the most. Question number two, it says to identify a need in your community, your state, uh, and how students might address it. The one I picked is uh, finding replacements for ourselves. We're running out of teachers. We can't fill jobs as they come open. One of the best ways I know how to do that is to raise our own replacements. I've been somewhat successful doing that. One of my former students is now uh, entering her third year as, a, as an agriculture teacher. I have two others pursuing degrees in ag ed. Just like a, a cattle rancher, if he doesn't replace his aging cows with, with replacement heifers, pretty soon he's out of business. We're the same. CTE, if we don't raise our own replacements, where are they going to come from? And so that's something our students can do. We need to speak positively about what we do for a living. We talk about preparing them for other careers and other trades. I think sometimes we forget. We have a, a perfect soapbox to tell them what's so wonderful about doing what we do. I think that's how our students can help with this crisis. We need to convince them that what we do is a, is a great way to, to make a living let them know that there's other paychecks besides the kind that you cash at the bank. There's a teacher. Sometimes we get to cash those other paychecks that other people would never understand. Thank you for giving me this opportunity 